It's that time in the show again where the two of us are given a presenter challenge. So let's find out what this week's challenge is all about. In this week's presenter challenge, you must each go to a different grow store with a thousand pounds and buy a system for propagation, cloning and stock plants. Bring your systems back to the studio for assessment by the Hydra Show producers. I'm here at Perryvale in London at Greenfinger Hydroponics. I'm here to meet Panch, who's hopefully going to give me some advice on stock plant and propagation system. Hiya. I'm after a two-tier tent system where I can keep a mother plant and plenty of cuttings. I've got a thousand pounds. Can you help me out? Yeah, definitely. No problem. You're in the right place. Okay, Gemma. So you've got a decent budget there. So this is the tent I put you on. It's a Secret Garden DR120T. So it's got all the features you'd expect from a good grow tent, um, except for obviously as well it's a propagation tent. So you've got a propagation unit that sits on the top of it, uh, specifically designed to be strong enough to take that and all the equipment you need. It's also got a thermally insulated layer in between, so you're not going to overheat your cuttings even though you've got a light on underneath. So would it be just one plant you were looking to grow then? Well actually, one of the criteria of the presenter challenge is to be versatile. Mm -hmm. So if I've got more than one mother plant, then I think I've got a better chance of winning. Okay, well that makes sense that you might want more than one because there's a few advantages to having a more than one plant, obviously. You could uh, have different varieties, you might have different, different types of cutting up top, or if you needed to take a lot of cuttings of the same variety, then that's going to be easier with five plants, obviously. You look like a fairly modern, up-to-date person, so this is a very modern system just out. Uh, it's called System 5, obviously a five-pot dripper system. Uh, it's an active hydro system, so it's going to pump your nutrients through your, through your dripper rings here for your plants to take the nutrients they need as and when they need it. Um, and this is actually a 200 litre tank underneath here, believe it or not, so you've got plenty of water in there. And uh, you can fill up from there as well, obviously. And when you need to empty it, there's just a little hole there that you can attach a pipe and a pump to. So all dead easy. So this is uh, just a little cute little humidifier we've put in. Um, humidity is really important for mothers and cuttings. You're going to get much better growth if you keep the stomata of your plant open, which is temperature and humidity related. So down the bottom I've got a 250 watt metal halide. Uh, that's going to provide enough wattage and enough penetration to actually give you good growth on mother plants. Up the top here you wouldn't need anywhere near as much wattage for little baby cuttings, which are only going to be, remember, about this big. Um, so this is a T5, it's a nice uh, even light spread off it, so you're not going to get the cuttings bending to try and reach the light. Uh, and also it's only 54 watt per tube, it's a four tubes, 54 watts each tube. So as you can see it can get nice and low without burning them or stressing them out too much. So two different types of light for two different types of growth. Panch then went on to explain that he would be supplying Gemma with an extraction fan and filter for the cloning area, and another one for the mother area along with a clip fan. Now what do Greenfinger recommend for nutrition? Okay, so I'm going to put you on the bioponic range from Hydrotops. Um, you've got a basic root stimulator, which does what it says on the tin. You've got Head Start here that's good for feeding cuttings with. Obviously the grow food there is for your bigger plants, your mothers. Then you've got Leaf Feed, which is a foliar spray that at half strength you can feed your cutting with. Full strength, it will bring the mothers on a lot more vigorously, a lot more quickly. Bactivator here is beneficial microbes which will protect the roots against things like pythium and also because it generally strengthens the plant it will help protect it against spider mite, things like that as well, make it much, more hard, much harder for things like that to attack it. And then at the end I've thrown you in a root safari as well uh, and this is a gel that you make up yourself and then you dip your rooted cuttings in it and that will help protect them against sh transplant shock and root disease. So I've glossed over that a little bit, just giving you very basic information. There's a lot more to it, but don't worry about that because we'll provide you with one of these books with, with the range so you'll know exactly what's going on. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I'm quietly confident about this challenge because I came in today expecting quite a basic setup, but what I'm coming away with is actually quite advanced. Mm -hmm. Thank you. No problem. See you later. For her cloning system, Pooja went along to Holland Hydroponics in Burnley, where she met up with store manager Michael. Having won the last presenter challenge and evened up the score, can Pooja go into the lead with the cloning system from Holland's? We'll start with the tent, so this is at the bottom of the shop and we'll go there now. Great, thank you. First, this is the mother tent, which is a silver back, which is a 1.2 metre tent by 2 metres high. As you can see, it's got a silver interior and you've got your multiple ventilation points, two at the top and one at the bottom for your intake and your outtake. As you can see, you've got your bars to hold your reflector and your fans from. Um, then on the bottom, you've got uh, an extra liner, which is there just to protect your floor from any leakage or spillages. Right. 
Next, we have the Wilma system, which is a four-pot big Wilma. It's got an 18-litre size pot, so there's four of them, as you can see. Quite a large size pot, but because obviously mother plants are going to be kept in there for quite a long time, pretty much indefinitely, you always want to have uh, plenty of room for the roots to grow and develop. Um, you've got, your, obviously, your, your tray below and then your tank where all your nutrients is kept. You want to replace that on a weekly basis. Your pump obviously comes with the kit, sticks in the bottom, uh, drip comes up through the centre pipe and then splits off to the four parts through a dripper system which we can uh, show you later on. Um, that is pretty much the, the basics of the, the four pot Wilma. They are a really very easy system you, to use. You can use pretty much any medium you want with it. So you can either go soil, uh, pebbles or a mixture of both if you want to. Here we have the medium that we're going to be popping into your Wilma for you which is the Hydro Cocoa 6040 by Gold Label which is basically a, a mixture of pebbles and cocoa in a ratio of 60-40. That's uh, pebbles are 60 and the 40 is the cocoa so it gives you the ideal drainage um, for your plants. Uh, this also benefits with the amount of oxygen that you get in there and also it will stop it from compacting quite a bit as well. So that's what we're using for your mother plants. Right. Here we have the light system which is going to be perfect for your mother plants. As you can see this is the unit, uh, comes with your ballast, your reflector and your bulb. Uh, standard wattage is a 400 watts, just a basic standard reflector, so it's ideal for your setup. Uh, the price is relatively competitive, so this allows us obviously to spend uh, more elsewhere with your nutrients and some of your other systems. Uh, the bulb is actually slightly different than the one we're actually going to be giving you today. Uh, this is a dual spectrum, which is ideal for if you were wanting to veg and flower at the same time. Mm. But we're going to go with metal halides. They do work, look a little bit different, but this is a basically a pure blue spectrum, which is ideal for veg. Here we have the tent that we're going to be using for you. As you can see, we've already got the propagator in there that's going to be used for your cuttings. Uh, the tent is the exact same as the one we showed you earlier. It's a silverback, just a lot smaller. That's and it. that's for the cuttings? It is, yes. Next we have the lighter system, which is going to be ideal for your cuttings to bring them on, uh, which is just above us, which is, as you can see, the EnviroGrow unit, which is two foot, four tube unit. Uh, each bulb is 24 watts, so it's a very low running cost and extremely low heat output, which is ideal for what you want when it comes to cuttings. Michael then went on to explain that Hollands would be providing an intake and outtake fan along with a twin fan speed controller for the mother area. For the cloning area, he's gone with an outtake fan with a thermostat fan controller. Now let's see what Michael suggests for nutrition. First one, obviously, you've got your doctor repair, which is pretty much plant health, everything that you want to make sure the plant's nice and healthy. So for a mother plant, which is ideal, especially if you're taking a lot of cuttings off them. Uh, second is your B1 boost, which is going to help your stem growth, uh, again, uptake of nutrients. You would use it all the way through veg and into flower, and it'll help with uh, your flowering side of it as well. But obviously, just because obviously it's a mother, we're just aiming for the plant health sort of side of it. Uh, next is your uptake, which again, increase the nutrient uptake. So in a boiler plant, you always want to make sure it's nice and healthy, um, always has an, an available of nutrients at all times. Second, you've got your base feed, which is your A and B, um, as you can see, A and B. Uh, always use equal parts of both, and that is literally your veg feed. Uh, next is your Clonix, which is for taking cuttings. Next one is the ATA root fast, which is basically once your cuttings have got some sort of root, you give them that, which is then going to promote more roots, roots better roots, quicker roots. Also, obviously, you want to use it in your mother plants as well, because healthy roots so ball is beneficial. Next is Formlex, which is just a basic weak feed. It's a lot weaker than your A and B by Psycho, which is, again is ideal for your cuttings. You can also spray it as well. Thanks, Michael, for all your help today. I'll see you in the studio later this week. By all means, see you later. So what a great trip. I think I've got everything I need. So let's get back to the studio and hopefully Hollands have given me a winning system this time. First of all, let's see what Panch from Greenfinger thinks about the Hollands setup. For the tents, Hollands opted for a 1.2 metre silverback for their mother plant and a 60 centimetre silverback for their cloning area. Okay, um, I mean the first thing I'd say about theirs is that it's wasting quite a lot of space. You've got Obviously it's got to sit sideways to it, so you're wasting space horizontally. But also, if you had a tiered one, you're saving space height-wise as well. So that's the first thing, is the amount of space they're using up with taking up two tents. 
Um, also, if you look at the little tent they've got, they're actually wasting space vertically inside that tent itself because they're having to lower the light right down onto the propagator. So again, it's just another advantage of having a little one up top. In their mother plant area, Holland's chose a 400 watt metal halide lighting system with a Euro reflector. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't um, say that a 400 watt is a bad thing to have at all. Uh, it's just a matter of handling the heat in a small tent. Um, it, it, a 400 watt halide, yeah, I wouldn't, wouldn't say that was a bad idea. The 250 we went for just simple case of just handling the heat better and it's also slightly cheaper for the budget as well. In his cloning tent, Michael chose a two foot, four tube T5 propagation light. Um, basically they're very similar lights, the only difference is ours is double the width so it's going to obviously, it, you can fit over two, propaga two propagators at once uh, and it will cover them both very adequately. Um, but they're both um, essentially the same bulbs in them, so there's not a huge amount of difference in, in the actual light coming out of them. For ventilation and environment in the mother area, Michael opted for a fresh air in with a stale air out system with an SMS twin fan speed controller. Yeah, um, I mean, six inch out and four inch in is a very good system. I wouldn't knock them for doing that at all. That's, that's a good way of doing it, a good ratio. So you've got three out for every two in, so you're going to keep negative pressure. Nothing wrong with that at all. Um, they're not quite as quiet as some brand of fans, um, like the RVK we went for, for example. Um, and also, they haven't, got a, they haven't got a filter on them at all, so there's no air scrubbing going on there whatsoever. Um, so yeah, I, I, in both sides of ours, we've got, but we've got carbon filters just to scrub the air, make sure there's no microbes or pollen or spores or anything like that getting onto my plants and contaminating them. Uh, personally, I think it's absolutely vital to have a filter regardless of what setup it is. For ventilation in the cloning area, Holland's went for a thermostat-controlled 4-inch extraction fan. That is a good thing to have. I, I wouldn't ever put anyone off one of those. The only reason we don't have one was a budget reason. We decided we went with, the, with leaving it out because we've got a humidifier in there. So it, it, it wasn't something that I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend. I'd always recommend a fan controller. It's just a budget issue. It's the only reason we left it out. In his mother plant area, Michael selected a four-pot Wilmer dripper system. The growth medium they provided was Gold Label 6040 a mix of cocoa and clear pebbles. Yeah, so, I mean, they've gone for a four-pot Wilmer, a uh, perfectly good system. Nothing wrong with it whatsoever to criticise. Um, we've gone for something a little bit different. We've gone for the, the uh, System 5, which is it's lower slung, so you, you're going to get a bit more height out of, your, out of your propagation tent, which is quite useful. Also, it flat packs, so it's easy to get in and out of places, very, very light to carry. Um, and also, because it's five, you get, like, the dice shape, which means that your spread of vegetation is going to be better in the tent. And in the cloning area, Michael chose a 77 site propagation tray. Um, yeah, again, this is the problem with having, you know, small tents with a small um, surface area, with a small square meterage. Um, you're going to waste a lot of height just from the fact that it, you've got to bring it down so low onto them, and then you're not going to be able to fit too many propagation units in it anyway, too many propagators in it anyway. Um, that's, like I say, that's the benefit of the one we've got. You, can fit, you could actually fit more than two in there. If you wanted to, you could go for a bigger propagation light and put even more. We've only gone for two at the moment because we've only got the light to cover two sufficiently. And finally, for nutrition, Michael opted for Formulex and Clonex for his clones and a range of psychonutrient for his mother plants, which included a grow A and B, a nutrient uptake booster, a vitamin booster and a plant repair nutrient. He also included a bottle of ATA Rootfast for when the cuttings are ready for transplanting. We didn't so. give her any Clonex, no, it's the only thing we didn't give is a root, which is a bit remiss actually, but I, again, it's something I, w I wouldn't say don't use. Um, what we have got is Root Safari, which is a, once you have rooted, it, performs, you, it forms a gel that you dip your rooted clones into that will perform a pre protective layer over the roots, which will help with transplant. They'll come quicker through the next blocks you put them in, or whatever medium you put them in, um, and they'll be a lot much more resistant to disease with it as well. Now it's time to find out what Michael had to say about the Greenfinger cloning system. For their tent system, Greenfinger chose the secret Jardin DR120T, a twin tent system with two separatable compartments, one above the other. Different, uh, obviously we don't stock the, the DR, the secret Jardin, uh, very nice tent, uh, you know, brilliant quality. Um, we supplied two tents in total, obviously a, a tall one, 1.2, and obviously a small one. 
Um, now, obviously, the difference obviously between these two tents, obviously, other than size, is it does give you the ability to play a lot more with them. For example, the 1.2 can be used as a flower room with a slight change of the bulb and you can quite easily flower in there. Obviously, the small one does have the option to be used as a single plant, um, bearing you could just put one single mother plant in. All you'd have to do is raise the light and that would be pretty much the only modification you'd need. Um, perhaps maybe a little clip-on fan if there was room, potentially. But other than that, it's pretty much a, a universal tent. For lighting in their mother tent, Greenfinger opted for a 250 watt metal halide lamp housed in an adjuster wing enforcer. Uh, very nice. Again, theirs isn't as high, so obviously they haven't got height. Um, their particular setup, very nice. Um, Again, I think a four would have been too much in that particular space, which, you know, obviously you don't want to increase your heat. Um, it's just obviously different tent, different setup, so different light. Um, nice system, though. In the cloning tent, Pants provided a four foot, four way T5 propagation light. Obviously, there's a, a bigger span tent, because obviously, theirs is a, a same base of a 1.2, I think it is approximately. So, again, um, if I went for that kind of space, I would have gone for that size light. Uh, depending if I'd have had a big enough space, maybe even bigger to the, the, uh, the next size, you know, the 8-tube, maybe. Again, it, it obviously depends on the size of your tent, but very nice uh, light indeed. For ventilation and environment in their mother plant area, Greenfinger opted for a 6-inch RVK150 A1 extractor with a 6-inch filter for air scrubbing and a Mr. Pro 3 ultrasonic humidifier. They also provided an oscillating six inch clip fan. They went for a humidity device, obviously to raise the humidity in your room, which is obviously uh, an ideal thing. We went for a fan speed controller to obviously control temperature, uh, which controls both intake and outtake. We went for that because we thought it was more important to obviously control temperature in and out than obviously raising the humidity. However important, um, your temperature in your room, if obviously it gets too warm, no amount of extra humidity will prevent your plants from suffering from obviously high temperatures and obviously vice versa for low temperature. Um, low temperature well, really high humidity will cause a, obviously an excessive amount of mould mildews to grow. Um, same obviously if it's too warm uh, and that's the reason why we went through the uh, fan speed controller then obviously humidity device. The pot system in Greenfinger's mother plant area included a System 5 five pot 19 litre folding grow system from Global Hydro with an additional Helia air pump and six inch air stone. The growing medium I supplied is Mapito. Uh, obviously we went for the Wilma four pot big. Um, it was a system that I thought would benefit most of that space. It uh, gives you adequate space for allowing them um, to veg, which obviously if you're wanting to take cuttings off them on a regular basis is one of the main issues. Um, it's not always good to have more in a smallish space. Obviously you want the cuttings to be healthy, um, you want the air movement around it. Um, compared obviously to their system, which I think had an additional part or two approximately, um, still um, a good system, again a different style of system. Um, there's not a really, I don't think there's a massive difference really between the system, other than theirs is flatter and wider, uh, ours obviously, obviously is, is more compact, so again it gives you access maybe to around the sides, um, we are obviously damaging the system, you don't have to stand on it or anything, um, you can quite easily get to the back of the, the pot, so um, maybe easier to move around, but there's not really a massive difference I think between the systems. In their cloning area, Greenfinger provided two large unheated propagators with a total capacity of around 100 clones to be placed comfortably. Our cloning station obviously only had a room for, as it was, for one propagator, which obviously, depending on the size of the cube you use, could vary between either 77 or to 150. It does have the ability to have more than that. You could fit two propagators in there, which obviously would raise the amount of cuttings you could do if you put it on its side. Um, the light the supplied with is sufficient for that. It would be able to light it. Um, other than that, again, it's uh, um, depending on space, really. Um, if you have space to have it led on its side, then you can. If you want to, you can. But obviously, again, we went for that size tent because it's obviously the most adequate for that size. Um, and it gives you the versatility to have a bit of a play around with. For their mother plant nutrition, Greenfinger supplied Hydrotop's Grow Feed A and B for growth, along with Hydrotop's Bactivator, which helps deter root diseases. 
for their cutting nutrients, Greenfinger provided Head Start and Root Stimulator, both from Hydratops, which would help give their clones the best start in life. Finally, Greenfinger provided Root Safari, which is a cloning gel used for transplanting clones. They obviously went for a different range than us. We went for obviously the Sarko. I believe they went for uh, the Hydratops range, um, which a uh, brilliant range feed. Um, they also went for a different root stim, if I remember rightly. They went for like a, a one-off treatment. Um, we went for obviously uh, the root fast, which we've had brilliant feedback from our customers. It's brilliant value for money, brilliant concentration, um, and always gives a really good, really quick root growth. Uh, we also, I think the only thing different than theirs, we added a Clonex, which obviously, being it was a cloning room, it was just a necessary automatic thing that we always usually pop in. If you're doing cuttings, then more than not, you will require either a scalpel or Clonex. At the end of the day, um, all of the ranges will give a really good uh, either value for money um, and hopefully will also give you uh, a brilliant percentage when it comes to your cuttings coming through at the end of the day. It's now time to tot up the scores. Even though the Holland's tents were more versatile and could be used for different purposes, the challenge was to create a cloning tent system, and the DR120T being purposefully designed for the job is a much better selection, giving Greenfinger top marks for the tent category. Both Greenfinger and Holland's went for T5 lighting systems and comparatively used the same amount of wattage per propagator. This means that this category has to be a draw. For lighting in the mother tent, Greenfinger did give a better reflector. However, the extra 150 watts that the Holland's 400 watt lighting system provided would help their mothers recover quicker after their cuttings had been taken, giving Holland's the edge in this area. The ventilation and environment in the cloning area has to be won by Holland's. The provision of the thermostat controller means that their cuttings would be kept at a more constant temperature, whereas Greenfinger's setup only allowed for the fans to be on or off, which gives them far less control. On the other hand, the ventilation and environment provided in Greenfinger's mother area included a clip-on fan and mister, and the extra humidity here would help Greenfinger's mothers massively after cuttings had been taken. Each of the cloning areas used the same type of unheated propagators and rock wool cubes. However, Greenfinger's system did allow for up to three propagators, whereas the Holland's tent, even laid on its side, would only allow for two, giving Greenfinger the point in the cloning system category. Holland's chose a Wilmer system, which is very popular and has certainly served its time as a system that works in the hydroponics industry. Greenfinger's System 5 is definitely innovative and has an extra pot, and we did ask for a system that would take a variety of mother plants, meaning the extra pot gives Greenfinger the win in the mother system category. The plant nutrition category is very hard to call, with both shops offering a comprehensive range of nutrients. However, Holland's did give us a rooting hormone which Greenfinger neglected, meaning the nutrition category is narrowly won by Holland's. Finally, control and measuring. Both systems came with timers and max-min thermohygrometers, which are essentially for controlling light and measuring temperature. However, Holland's did provide that extra twin fan speed controller, something which Greenfinger would have put in if it wasn't for budget restrictions. Well, with the scores totted up, it looks like a draw. However, we don't like stalemates on Hydro Show. So the final decision comes down to our producer's discretion. And the winner is... Greenfinger. Having thought long and hard, our producer Pete based the winning decision on Greenfinger's compact tent selection, giving a better overall growing environment for mothers and cuttings. However, he did remark that this system really does need a fan speed controller, something that he would cash out the extra £100 or so to make the system that little bit better.